وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم مفتاح باب رحمه الله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم مفتاح باب رحمه الله وسيكم نفسي بتقوى الله في السر العلانية أما بعد A question was asked of me recently by several people and the question was oh Shaykh why is it that we are always every single Jum'ah we hear the Imam the Khatib in Masajid, all over the world, making dua, asking Allah to remove the hardships. Every week we hear in our khutbas, Oh Allah, remove the difficulty from our brothers in Syria. And every week we have something new, a new problem. And then we make dua, that Allah removes that problem. And then every week there's a new problem. And every month there's a new problem. And every single year there's a new problem. More people, more suffering, more people losing their lives, more orphans. What's happening, he said to me. Why we make the most beautiful of du'as in the khutbas, on the hajj, in the taraweeh, in the qunut al-fajr. We make the most beautiful of du'as and people cry. But where is the answer? Where is the answer? This is a very important... And he asked, yeah, yeah, I, I want to know why. Why we keep on calling? And we have no relief from our situation in Palestine. Nearly more than 60 years. The same problem. For 60 years we've been asking Allah to make things easy. And we get, it gets worse and worse. More land is taken. Occupied territories increase. And if you look at the map, and if Palestine gets smaller and smaller, and more problems start to happen, what's going on? It's as if, the person said, it's as if that we're not asking. Or, it's as if Allah is not answering our dua. And that's the answer. Why is Allah not answering our dua? Because if He was, things would be easy. We wouldn't hear more people now, every day in the TV, more bloodshed. More children losing their lives in Ramadan, the most holiest of months. Why is Allah not answering our dua? This is a very important question, inshaAllah ta'ala. There is adab, there's manners. There's ways that we ask Allah, Azza wa Jalla. Allah has promised in the Quran, call upon me, I will answer. That's a promise from Allah. So we can't say Allah Azza wa Jalla is not there. And if you remember in, in the Ramadan, we talked about this briefly. But inshallah, in this khutbah and next khutbah, we're going to go into how we ask Allah. How do we get a quick reply from Allah? And why does Allah delay? This is a certain reason why Allah delays the dua. But there's a hadith that I finished the khutbah in Arabic with. It's a hadith sahih in which there was a man. The Prophet mentioned a man in the desert and he raised his hands up as Allah said, ask me. And the man asks, he's in the desert, he asks Allah because all he knows is to ask Allah. And he asks, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, help me, help me, help me, help me. And then the Prophet says, and this man, his haram, his food, is haram. His clothes are haram. وَغُدِّيَ بِحَرَامٍ And he ate. His last meal was haram. So where? من أين يستجاب له? Where is he going to get the answer from? His food is haram. His clothes are haram. Everything about him is haram. How do you expect Allah to answer his dua for the brothers in Gaza? His house is haram. Bought on haram money. His clothes are haram because his job is haram. His food is haram because he's not really bothered about eating halal. Or not checking the ingredients. 
And then you're going to come and ask, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, there's a way like that. Allah Azza wa is not happy with the Ummah. This is the only way. And some of you may, get, may feel upset. No, Allah is not happy with the Ummah. Allah is not happy with the Muslims in general. All you have to do is look. Look at yourselves. Don't look too far. Look within yourself and within your families. How many people tarik the Salah? How many people have left Salah? If you look within your immediate family, you can always, and you, or your extended family, you're going to find at least one person not praying. And how do you expect Allah Azza wa Jalla to have rahmah on this Ummah? Mm. When the most basic of things we're not doing, the five prayers we're not doing. And there's a hadith which we'll mention next week, inshallah ta'ala, which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi said, Ask Allah, don't forget Allah in good times. You only remember Allah in difficult times. Remember Allah when the times are good, so Allah may remember you when things are bad. It's the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. This is how things work. So when we look back at our salah, and some people say, every khutbah he's talking about the same thing, nothing new, as some of our akhwan, you know, Allah guide them like to say, nothing new in the khutbah, like to say. Always talking about the same thing, missing salah, ghiba, namima, these type of things, yani, naam, and cutting off blood ties, naam, we're going to keep on talking about these things. Why? Show me when you stop, and I'll stop talking about these things. But until I keep on hearing people backbiting in the masjid, and sometimes from my house I can hear people backbiting, why should I stop talking about these things? When we have Fajr like Maghrib, or when people are praying a Fajr at home, hey, we're not make it too difficult. When people are praying Fajr at home, when we don't have Muslims who only know Allah one month of the year, and in every month of the year they don't know Allah, when all that there are Ramadan Muslims, Muslim people who know Allah in Ramadan, and outside of Ramadan they don't know Allah Azza wa Jal. They don't know Salat al Fajr. They don't know the Masjid. And the Masjid doesn't know them. Why should we change the topic? Because Allah is not changing the situation of the Muslims. Until we start changing these things, these fundamental things. When we have fam people in our family missing Fajr, or people sitting here right now, you've missed Fajr. And you know, the hadith says, if a person misses Salat al-Fajr, you know, shaitan urinates bala. He urinates in your ear. So you have some people now are sitting here with your rind in the ear. And maybe this is why they don't listen to the khutbah. Who knows? Maybe this is why they don't hear what in the khutbah. Because the ears are full of, are full of your rind. In other words, you've been defeated before you woke up. Shaitan has defeated you before you woke up. Before Israel, before Fulan and Fulan, these type of place, these type of people, you are defeated when you got up. When Shaitan urinated in your ear, you couldn't get up for Fajr, and then you want Allah, you want to go and remove the problems. You've been defeated from first, the first break, first go. So we have a, a nation for the people with your rind in the ear, wanting Allah to help them, and Shaitan is laughing at them. Shaitan is laughing at us. Uh, Ramadan went, came and went very quickly. And some people, Shaitan came back, he found the exact same thing. The same Fulan, same Fulan the same person Shaitan left, said goodbye to before Ramadan, he came back and he found exactly the same person. He's just going to continue where he left off. And that's why some people find it, start missing Fajr easy, start loosening the grip, going back and doing haram. So going back to the, the topic of the khutbah, Asking Allah is a fundamental aspect of our faith. It's one of the most important things of our faith. And the hadith in Arabic I mentioned, Ad-du'a hu al-ibadah. Du'a, asking Allah is worship. It's an act of worship. And don't think that sitting in a mosque and asking Allah to help you is weak. It's a sign of weakness. Some of our young people say, no, we need to go. We need to march. We need to write letters to the MPs. We need to go and do jihad. We need to do all these things to help our brothers in Gaza. Sitting in a masjid doing dua is nothing. And this is a rahmah. Right now the rain is a rahmah from Allah Azza wa Jal. This is a rahmah. And one of the important things is that when, the rain, when it rains, asking Allah for dua, this is a good time. One of the reasons 
Allah sends rain down, like it's raining right now. It's for Allah to see people asking dua. So when it rains like this, ask Allah to help our brothers in Gaza, to help our brothers in Libya, to help our brothers in Afghanistan, in Iraq, and to help our brothers in Africa now who are dying from this disease, Ebola. Naam, there's Muslims there. But this is a rahmah, it's on the day of Jum'ah. And it's during the khutbah, this is a rahmah from Allah Azza wa Jalla. We need people to understand, to connect all these things together. We ask Allah to elevate the suffering of our brothers all over the world and to elevate and the brothers here who have difficulties in their lives with their children, with their families, with their wives. We ask Allah to elevate their problems, inshaAllah, by the barakah of this rain, inshaAllah ta'ala, and by the, the, the sacredness of this month and in this masjid and in Yom Jum'ah. And Yom Jum'ah is a dua. And a sa'a in which the dua is accepted, a time in which in Jum'ah where the dua is accepted. And some ulama say it's during the, when the khutbah is going, when the khatib is talking, some ulama say this, this during this time, that's when the dua is answered. And we have rain as well. La ilaha illallah. So these are signs for us to make dua. Make a dua to Allah, Azza wa Allah elevates our problems. And inshallah, next week's khutbah, inshallah, we're going to go into how do we ask Allah to help us? How do we ask Allah for dua? What does Allah want to see in us? The manners. We're asking someone very generous to help us. We don't need anybody else. We don't need the United Nations. We don't need any MP. We don't need anybody. First and foremost, we have Allah. Allah has all the power to change everything. Kun for your kun. In the Quran, Allah says, all I have to say is kun. Be, and it is. That's all, all Allah has to say. But Allah wants to see in us. Adab, akhlaq. Allah wants to see halal food, halal house, not house based on interest, haram. It doesn't work like that, inshallah. So next week, inshallah, we're going to go into the manners, adab, of asking Allah and how to get an answer from Allah because we've been going on asking and asking. To, we're fed up of asking. No answer. It's me to go back to it. Why are our du'as not being answered? And when we find out why our du'a is not being answered, we can start to change and we can start asking Allah. And hopefully Allah Azza wa can answer our du'as quickly. Insha'Allah ta'ala, ibadallah.